Thy loving kindness, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just read was the translation of the collect for today's Mass, and some of you who have been here a number of years have heard me say, um, report this little story before, which I'm about to say. That at our seminary in North America, the porter, the front desk man, observed very carefully an old English custom on this particular Sunday of the year that of Stir Up Sunday. So, happy Stir Up Sunday. In the afternoon, all the British seminarians were invited to his family's house to partake in the stirring up. So the stirring up of what? Well, the Christmas pudding mix, in fact. The ingredients were stirred up and laced with brandy to let mix together through Advent to be cut for Christmas. And the Stir Up title there comes from the beginning of today's collect in fact exitaquesimus in the latin stir up so listen out for the collects throughout the sundays of advent as all of them with the exception of advent three gaudete sunday ask god to stir up something today we ask god to stir up the wills of the faithful in other words us so why? That we earnestly, seeking the fruit of good works, may receive more abundantly the gifts of God's loving kindness. And it is our willpower, faculty of our soul, our willpower, whereby we should choose, of course, the good. It's also with that faculty, the will, that we can choose the bad and the sin as well. But it's important, like we say, at the end of this liturgical year to have our will stirred up so we seek after choosing the good. So, first things first, today let us take that extra bit of time to stir up our willpower to really pray from the heart in our thanksgiving after Mass today for the abundant graces that God has given us as a community and as individuals this past liturgical year which is about to finish. As we said, next Sunday Advent 1 marks the beginning of the new liturgical year. And thanksgiving is an important part of prayer and also of the virtue of religion. Today's gospel is somewhat frightening in the way it describes the fall of Jerusalem. And this account also points to and alerts us to the end of time at the second coming of Christ. It is a reminder that the present life is fleeting and an invitation to keep ourselves in readiness for the final step which will usher us into eternity. The doctrinal fact is that uh, we will all die. And we will come face to face with our Lord at our own, what we call, particular judgment. What are we going to be judged on? Well, ultimately, how much we have loved God and neighbor. All our sins, therefore, will be put before us as the times which we have not loved as we should, where we have rejected God, failed to follow his law, which is, of course, what is good for us and what is well-ordered and what is right. This is why the epistle for today's Mass prays that, to quote, we may be filled with the knowledge of God's will, that we might walk worthy of God in all things pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. Again, linking to the collect there too. This is what we need to accomplish during the liturgical year ahead, to adapt and conform ourselves to God's holy will, to unite ourselves to it completely, and being moved in all things by that divine will alone, to act in such a manner as to please our Lord in everything. So we need to become saints. That's the task for this coming liturgical year. It's our New Year's resolution, New Liturgical Year's resolution to become saints. Don't forget we get the sufficient grace to be able to do that, each and every one of us. We don't, we miss that, of course, we miss the point of our existence, in fact, for all eternity, which is, of course, crying shame, to say the least. Saints are people who, despite any former ignorance, sin, or weakness, have sought to conform their whole being to the divine will of God, to love him. To conform ourselves to God completely takes a desire and willpower to do this. It takes perseverance, and it takes cooperation with God's grace, which... Out of his infinite love for us, he always wishes to give us. That's why we ask God in the collect of today's Mass again to stir up the wills of thy faithful people, to have our wills stirred up. Not just to think, yeah, yeah, we've got to become saints. That's true, yeah, let's yeah, do, the, do those prayers tomorrow. Brilliant, great, then half forget about it. No, we need to really embrace that, take it on board and mean it and fulfill it. Never know, it might be our last year on earth. 
So it is the more we correspond with grace, the greater the graces our Lord will grant us. No, part of cooperating with God's grace is to persistently work away at removing the obstacles to his grace. And these obstacles, of course, are our sins. As we approach Advent, let us challenge ourselves to renew or step up our effort to make a daily examination of conscience. Each evening going through the day past to see where we have offended Almighty God where we have sinned. For this, we need to be open to correction and inspiration from the Holy Ghost. Of course, this takes humility, so we better be praying for it and working for that virtue. Don't underestimate the importance of the examination of conscience. It is a way of repairing ourselves. We are broken because of sin, so therefore we need to be fixed. And for this, we need to know what to repair. An examination of conscience is therefore, and I've used this example, I think, a couple of years ago or more, of a computer diagnostic tool that runs through every action of the computer and finds any faults, then fixes them. This is like the examination of conscience. Without, um, without it, sins slip us by or sometimes unnoticed. Remember, the more we sin, the more we lose what's called the sense of sin. In other words, the fact that it offends God is objectively wrong. One can think perhaps even of our own selves or if we know little children, perhaps if they've told a lie, perhaps after they've re um, reached the age of reason, they know that was wrong and they deliberately did it. And they're quite shocked, hopefully, about that and taken aback that they did that deliberate sin. Of course, if you then tell 10 lies a day or something, you start to do it almost second nature then. You lose that sense of sin that initially, the first time you perhaps committed that sin, then, then it's, it really shocked you and stirred your conscience as it should. So therefore, the more we sin and it becomes a habit, the more it becomes second nature and we lose, we lose the sense of sin as it's called. Hence, again, the importance of that daily examination of conscience to spot this and root it out. Sins become evil habits till we are desensitized to the gravity of them. Shamefully, sins can then appear normal to us, now sad and now dangerous to our souls. Of course, the more we find it normal then, someone eventually picks us up on it, corrects us on it, then our pride kicks in, no, 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 it's not. And then we want everyone else to do the same thing and accept it as well. See that enacted in law, sadly, these days as well. Through making a daily examination of conscience, we pick faults up early or if they have already become habitual we spot this and can work at rooting them out it is these habitual often venial sins that tend us to a state of lukewarmness which our lord as he says in the scriptures detests and lord detests that if only they were hot or cold you do something with that but no lukewarmness that sort of oh well whatever just sort of carrying along there without much care then yeah hates that so ask yourself each night, what sins have I committed? How sorry am I for having offended God? Am I in the danger of routine, routine in committing sins and routine in confessing these same old sins? Am I doing something about trying to get rid of them or have I just accepted them as normal? Do I have a firm purpose of amendment? How big is my effort to cease on the means to uproot my sins? Whatever gaps or shortcomings we have in our answers to these questions, we need to ask God for the grace to fix them. See, we have come into this world, we've been created by Almighty God, brought into this world to live. To do what when we live? Well, to know love and to do the will to serve Almighty God here on earth and be with him in, uh, eternally in heaven then. Next week we begin preparing to welcome the birth of our Saviour who came into the world not to live but to die, die for our sins, die because we have failed to do as God has commanded. Let us read, take one of the Gospels this Advent, make that a little Advent um, penitential activity for example, a new um, liturgical year, year resolution perhaps. And take a gospel this Advent and ask our Lord to show us how to imitate him more this coming liturgical year so that we can follow him better and rather than lay more weight of sin on him at Calvary which then a couple of seasons later then we celebrate at Easter, Passion Tide. 
Happy the soul who, at the end of life, after having exercised itself much in love, can be immediately admitted to the beatifying union of heaven. Then it will have nothing to fear from the judgment of Jesus, for this judgment will be its eternal joy and happiness. So going back to the collect prayer of today's Mass, we ask God to stir up our wills, to will not to sin, to will sanctity, to will virtue, that we earnestly seeking the fruit of good works, that is our sanctity, may receive more abundantly the gifts of God's loving kindness. May God be with you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Amen.